Okay, the little link stitch book. Let's make a start. Um, this is a way to practice two of the stitches we did during the five day challenge. If you didn't do the five day challenge, no worries. It's a way to practice the link stitch and the kettle stitch. There won't be a long stitch, but there's a link stitch and a kettle stitch in here. So um, I'm gonna flip my camera around and show you um, how I created this. The written directions are in the description, um, but just watch along and then um, you, know, you can print those out later. Um, the reason this came about is because I have um, probably like, you probably have this too, um, I have a big basket of um, white paper scraps. Let me just uh, let me flip this down so you can see. Um, this huge basket of like paper scraps of, of white papers. And, you know, I don't want to throw them away, but sometimes they're um, sort of, you know, signatures I made during a demo or something, or they're, they're pieces of paper that have, you know, were a mistake or just, you know, just random bits of paper. I'm sure you all have also have random bits of paper or, you know, like the ends of pieces. I don't even know what that was. Honestly, I don't even know what half this stuff is, to be quite frank. Um, you know, bits of handmade paper and, you know, you can't throw this good stuff away. It's a piece of, I don't know, Windsor Newton watercolour paper. You can't throw this stuff out, this cardy paper. I think I was thinking about doing an accordion that day, but, you know, I never finished it. So um, I have lots of these sort of pieces of white paper that are just kind of lying around. I wasn't quite sure what to do with. So what I decided to do was... Um, let me flip the camera back up. Hello. What I decided to do um, was create a little book from them. So I took a bunch of these scraps. I kind of made a note of where the grain was. And then I cut or I tore some of them down into little pieces that measured four inches high by six inches across. And I believe I put them, I did, I put the metric in the PDF. I just don't remember those numbers off the top of my head. So I cut or tore down just a bunch of um, papers like this. So they're mixed, you know, there's some, you'll see in a second when I flip the other camera around, but there's some shiny white paper, there's a thin sort of 90 pound watercolor paper, there's a thick handmade paper, there's some writing paper. They're all sorts of different types of papers and um, they measure four inches high by six inches across, and the grain runs this way. You know what, occasionally the grain might not run that way, but it's okay. This is just a cute, chunky little book of scraps. It's not really, you don't have to get super, super crazy. So I literally just went through my big pile of papers and tore or cut down a smaller pile of papers. Um, there were more than this, but I've already made them into signatures. Um, so that was kind of the premise. And then um, I also went through my stash because I know you have these two. We all have these um, of printed papers. So these are jelly prints. You may have um, patterned paper from scrapbooking. You may have done some marbling. You may just have regular patterned papers. Um, these, I think, I actually think these ones may have been. Um, from waste sheets, from jelly printing. Um, any kind of printing that you've done, any kind of artwork, it, it's from that sort of pile of things which, you know, you don't really wanna throw away, but they're not really what you imagine that they would be. So I also tore down some um, little prints like this, um, this exact same size. So uh, four inches high by six inches across. So that when we fold these over, we're gonna make um, a four inch high book that is three inches across, okay? And um, so I gathered together on my table, my work table, a big pile of these white papers, scattered them all over, and then a pile of these as well, and then just started mixing and matching. So let me show you how I did that. I'm gonna switch the camera around so that we are looking at my table. And you'll see what I have weighing down my um, signatures. I have this big um, uh, litho stone. So let me flip this around. 
and bring it a little bit closer. There we go. Let's get it focused. So this is a huge lithostone, which weighs an absolute ton. If I dropped this on my toe, I would break it. Okay, luckily I didn't break it. So um, these are the signatures. I just left these under here overnight. Um, hopefully everyone can see me okay. Let's just bring this here. There we are. Hopefully that looks good. Okay, so like I said, I, I took my big basket of scraps. I threw a bunch of, um, covered my table and then just started assembling them. So what I tried to do was um, I kind of made piles. So I sort of put a water, so this, you know, I put one watercolor and then I put like two sketch. And then what I tried to do is make them into piles between four and six papers such that they were a similar thickness. So you'll see these signatures, they're a similar thickness. Um, it's not, it's an art, not a science. It's just a feel. Okay, they feel and look a similar thickness. So for this one, I'm going to take a couple pieces of writing paper. I'm going to take one thin piece of watercolor paper. I've got a one thick piece of handmade paper. Um, I'm going to not use that one. I'm going to use this piece of glossy paper I like the look of. Um, I'm going to fold that over just gently. And then I'm going to take one of these. So I could put one of these inside. Um, but what you want to do is um, have one heavier weight um, print to go on the outside because that's going to form our signature wrappers and cover. So I could put one inside as well, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to... Um, which one do I fancy? I fancy this one. I'm going to use this one on the outside. So just give it a gentle fold. So I basically I made up these signature bundles. Now you'll see they're not, you know, they're not all perfectly aligned. Um, this isn't meant to be a precision book. This is meant for us to kind of let loose and relax. Um, hold on, I'm just checking that there's no questions. So um, if there are questions, perhaps you could try and help each other out a little bit, um, just in case Mickey can't keep up the chat, although it looks pretty good today. Looks pretty good so far. So I gave these a bone fold. And then I pressed them overnight so they got nice and squished. So look at the um, difference between pressing and not pressing. These are my press signatures and that's an unpressed signature. So that makes a huge difference, right? Um, it's gonna, we'll have to just work with this one unpressed for now and live with it. Um, so the, this is a mixture of papers inside and this is a slightly heavier print. But when I say slightly heavier, we're talking like a maybe an 80 pound sketch paper. Just don't use a super, super thin one on the outside. And all of these are the same in terms of what's, you know, well, they're mixed papers inside and they've all got a print on the outside. And I'm gonna choose one of these for my cover and one for my back cover. So I'm gonna have this as my front cover. I haven't decided on my back cover yet. So what you're gonna do is gather together approximately, I would do a minimum of six, but you could do a heck of a lot more if you wanted to. I want you to press these overnight so that they're nice and um, compressed. And then if you really want to, you can trim up this foredge. I am not going to because um, I kind of like the way this looks. So how many are per signature? There's either, this one's got four, four, between four and six, between four and six, just depending on how thick the paper is. All I'm aiming for is to get them a similar thickness. And the way I do that is just by looking and by feeling. It's not, it's not terribly scientific. And if one is a bit chunkier or thinner than the other, it, it's not the end of the world, I promise. Um, it's just scraps of paper. This one has, I think that one has four. This one might have five, between four and six. So this is a great way to use up all your little scraps. Etc. So I forgot I did directions, but I didn't actually bring them in with me. So we will just I'll just have to remember the directions. And in a couple of them, I included a little fold out. So this is a piece of cardi paper. You can see it's from another project. It's got like a score line in the middle of it, which I don't really want there, but whatever. Um, and so for 
a couple of them, I did these little fold outs. So it's still four inches high, like all of the others, um, but it's actually um, three, six, nine inches across. And I just scored it to make a little fold like this. So let's slot that into our, this is our, the one we just did, right? I could, I think I might remove the thick handmade paper and replace it with this little fold out like that. And you can put it anywhere. You can put it in the center, but I'm going to put mine um, inside like that. So that we've got the first piece here. Then when I open it over here, we have this little fold out. So you could put envelopes and things in here. Um, the one thing that you want to worry about is making sure that they're all the same height. If some of them are different width, if some are a little bit narrower, that's fine. You don't want one sticking out necessarily, but if some are slightly narrower, um, that's fine too. So if any questions, sorry, you all have had a trouble finding me today. Ugh. Oh dear. I'm sorry. I went, so the video started at 10. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, it's a good job I've just been rabbiting on, isn't it? So that um, I waited for everyone to arrive. So when I've made these signatures and I've compressed them and I've trimmed them if I want to, I'm certainly I'm not going to. This is what the book looks like untrimmed. So I sort of like that. Let me see if I can get a bit closer. I kind of like that sort of rough edge. But if it really bothers you and you want a much neater book, by all means, trim it up. Um, but this project is, is kind of meant to be um, a little more relaxed and fun. So if you're just joining us, this is what we're making today. It's a um, little link stitch book that we're practicing the kettle and the link stitches that we did during the five day challenge. Um, the directions are, um, you can look at the link on the screen, um, but also they are in the description of this video as well. So next thing we need to do is to create a little punching template. So we're gonna make five stitches. Let's unwrap this so we can see. We're gonna make five stitches two, um, hold on, I don't want to mess this up, two kettles and three link. So kettle on either end. Hopefully, hopefully this is familiar if you've just done the challenge. And then three link stitches right here. So we need a template with five holes. We're going to create a template, which is the exact height of our little book or our signatures, which is four inches. Let me grab a ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out where our three link stitches go. So we want to place them evenly throughout the book. So the way I do this, it's super easy. By the way, I've already marked the head of my template. I don't know. I did that last night. I'm not sure why. Come a little bit closer. An easy way to figure, um, to work out where the link stitches go is just to fold this puppy in half once, in half twice, like that. Open it up and you've got three creases. You've got a crease there, a crease there and a crease there. That's our three link stitches. How easy is that? There was not a ruler in sight. And now we need to place our two kettles. Now, can you guess where the kettle stitches need to go? Pop in the comments if you know where they're not supposed to go. I mean, yeah, pop in the comments if you know where they should go. Where will our kettles go, head and tail? One, one at the head, one at the tail. Half an inch, that's it, here we go. Half inch from top, half inch from bottom. That's it. That is your template, friend. There, you got it. I knew you would all know. That is our template. How easy is that? Let me just do it one more time for you. You're going to cut your template the same height as your signature, which is four inches. You're going to fold in half and in half again. And just lightly crease it with your fingers. I'm going to open it up at those three crease points. One, two, three little link stitches. And then we're popping our kettles at the head and the tail. This is in the written directions for you, but 
Um, I'm sure you won't even need it because it's so straightforward, right? If you have a punching cradle, um, you can use that. If you want to just do it on the desk with a piece of foam, you certainly can. Um, I have had lots of emails about when these are going to be back in stock. I am in contact with the people who make them for me right now. They're having a hard time getting wood. So I will let you know as soon as possible. Um, before we punch those holes, though, what we do need to do is mark the head of all of our signatures. I've already done these ones and punched them because I don't think you need to watch me do that. But there certainly is um, a head on some of these because of the way the pattern goes on the, um, uh, the prints. So I've marked them with a little um, pencil dot. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hopefully this should all be familiar. Um, let's, you could mark this as well if you want, but I'm just going to mark the um, signature. But we could also put one on the little wrapper as well. Make sure there's no questions while I'm doing this. Um, can you do the same template if you did a four by six? Yes, absolutely. Just um, whatever the height of your book, you can do exactly the same procedure with the template. So yeah, this is what makes it so easy. So the fact that these are four inches high, they could be different height and different width. This, this, these are just, I'm giving you the measurements I'm using, but go ahead and use any measurements you would like. If you do a significantly bigger book, you may want to add in a few more link stitches. Um, but for a six inch high book, you'll be fine with um, three link and two kettles. Okay, so now I've marked the head. Let's grab our punching template. I promise I will get, um, I will let you know when these are available again. I'm actually going to use um, the, so this is the one I just created just now, but I'm going to use the one that I used for all of these so that my holes line up because I did this yesterday. So just pop that in the center. Remember, you can hold it in place with a clip if you would like to. And then just gently punch all the holes through. If you don't have a punching cradle, you can make one, use a phone book, use an encyclopedia, use a piece of foam. Okay. I just stabbed myself with the awl. Don't do that. Okay, we can lose those. So you can tell that this was recently made because it's just not compressing. Okay. All right, I'm going to figure out what order I want my... So I definitely want this as my front page. I want this as my back page. And I don't really care about the order of the others. So here's my little book ready to sew. I don't know if you can see the... Um... Oh, huh. let's make sure our heads line up. Those little dots line up. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, great. This is what's live. Okay, let's. How many of you bleed over your books? I bet you all bleed on your books, right? Okay. What angle? What is your punching cradle? I do not know, Judy. I would have to get out of a tractor. I can check for you, though. Oh, all right. Well, we'll just wait while the, we staunch the bleeding, folks. <laughs> Where did you put that first aid kit? Yes, it's in the closet, Mickey. <laughs> okay. While we wait, while we wait for the bleeding to stop, <laughs> let's um, let me know in the comments what kind of um, wrappers you might put around yours. If you would use um, what kind of prints you might use or patterned papers or marble papers. Give us to know what do you think you will uh, make your little link stitch from. Um, I don't want that color thread. Uh, what color thread? Should we do white? I want one that you can see. Mm, I can see blue. Pale blue be better for you to see. Nope. Uh, 
the white, that's too thin. Okay, we'll go with the cream. Artist papers, oh, paste paper, that's it. I forgot about paste papers. Nice, what else? Scrapbook papers. Do you know, I just gave away a 30 gallon box of scrapbook papers um, and it kind of hurt me. Um, where did I get my thread? This is from Royal Wood Limited. You just look them up online, Royal Wood Limited. I think they make baskets, it's for basket weavers. So that's where I like to get my threads. Okay, friends, um, let's start sewing. I'm gonna need a needle. Now in terms of um, how much thread, I this is too much, but I'm gonna, we, we want quite a, we want to be generous with our thread. I know you all have a nervous breakdown if I ask you to do a weaver's knot. So um, we've got six signatures. So I'm going to do six times the height plus two extra. So eight times the height of my book. So, but I'm going to be generous. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six for the number of signatures. So if you're doing more, do, do more than one, two extra you can see i was being really generous with that if you're just joining us we're making this little link stitch book from scraps the directions are um on the screen where to find them and also um blah 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 uh in the in the description of the video so i'm gonna thread my needle this is I may wind up doing this twice, folks, because this is going to be a little bit counterintuitive to many of you. Um, talking of thread, this royal wood is fairly heavily waxed, which I really, really like. But if you don't like heavily waxed, you won't like it. Because you see when I pull this through here, you know, there's sort of wax building up. So if you don't really like heavily waxed thread, you probably won't like the royal wood. But I love it. Okay, friends, I'm going to attempt to um, sew this so that you can see. Let's come in a bit closer. We're going to start out with signatures one and two. We're going to set the others aside. Let me make sure. I'm going to do my best um, to sort of hold it close to the camera so you can see it. I can't get any close. Yes, I can. Um, for this one, it looks like you need a center stitch for the closure. Yes, I would definitely have a center stitch, if possible. So if you're doing a bigger book, you may still want to have um, an odd number of stitches. This is my thread. I'm going to do this twice, okay? Oops, here we go. Make sure we are focused. Make sure we have enough light. There we are. I'm going to do this twice. So if you don't get it the first time and you do have printed directions, which I pray are correct, but you never know. Let's set aside number two. Put it on side, and I'm going to start with signature number one, my front cover. I'm going to go from the outside to the inside in whole. So I'm going to call them A, B, C, D, E. Okay. So I'm going in a whole num a whole A. Let me just find where the hole is. You know how, um, where's my ball? You know how when you make the um, holes ahead of time and then they shift? Let's just, just want to make sure that they're lined up. There we go. So we're going to start on the outside. Oh, we're waiting with bated breath, aren't we? Okay, let's just reforge these. Maybe they um, closed up a bit overnight. Signature one, A, B, C, D, E for the holes. We're going to come in right here from the outside to the inside of hole A. Okay. <laughs> if it doesn't want to go through, come on, come on. You can go through. There we are. Outside to inside. I want you to leave yourself a tail, a good tail. This is measuring about six inches. Leave yourself a good six inch tail, okay? 
outside to inside the first hole, hole A, on the front cover. Then we need to exit hole B. Second hole. So this is what it looks like inside. Full stitch inside. And now we're on the outside. We're still on the, the um, front cover. This is actually going to be the ins. Actually, this is, you know what? This is going to be my back cover. Mm -mm. Maybe I want to start on the back. Scrap that. I'm going to start on the back cover. Starting on the back cover, folks. It's my prerogative, right, to change my mind. I'm going to start on the back because that's what's going to get covered up. So if I were you, I don't know if it says you can start with the front or the back, but I'm going to start with my back cover. So starting on my back cover, I've got holes A, B, C, D, E. I'm going in hole number A from the inside to the outside. I'm going to leave myself about a six inch tail. Okay. And then I'm going to exit hole B, the second hole. At this point, I'm going to add the next signature. Okay. So for me, it doesn't matter which one. Just make sure my heads are aligned. My head is up here. My head is up here. I'm going to add on the next signature, and I'm going to do a tiny straight stitch to join them together. I'll flip it over so you can see in a second. I'm going to tighten it. We can see a tiny straight stitch there, which joins them together. Okay. So straighten, I mean, pull tight, sorry. I'm inside signature number two now at hole B. I'm exiting hole C, the center hole. Exiting the center hole of the second signature. Okay. So these holes are a little bit blown out, but we'll flatten them later, okay? I'm on the outside, hole C, signature two. I'm gonna enter signature one at hole C again to make another little straight stitch. Oops, let's come inside. So this is signature number one, or it's the back cover, okay? Coming back inside. So now on signature one or the back cover, there's another little straight stitch there. Don't worry about the extra paper. We'll get rid of that later. There's my little straight stitch right there. Just a straight stitch, nothing complicated. I'm now inside the back cover again, and I'm going to exit hole D. So this is what my back cover looks like. Shorter stitch and a longer stitch. For now, it'll look different in a minute. This is what my second signature looks like on the inside, just one long stitch right now. So now I'm back out on the front. Remember, this is in your written directions. So I'll go through, I go through it step by step. I'm on my back cover. I'm going into hole D of the second signature making another little straight stitch. Come on, darling. Come through. There we are. You know you want to. There we are. I have to talk nice to our books. Another little straight stitch right here. See it? Little straight stitch. Pull it tight. I'm inside the second signature at hole D. I'm exiting hole E inside the second signature. So this is the most complicated part of the book. And once you've got these two attached, um, you're gonna be golden. So let's just review where we're at. This is my um, back cover. This is, we'll just call it signature one. We entered the back cover. We went sort of in, out, in, out, not like a little S pattern. We've got three little straight stitches here, which will become links a bit later on. We can worry about that blown out paper later. There's, this hole here is empty and this hole here is empty. And we are now on the outside of the book 
on the second signature at hole E. So what we're going to do is we'll do another little straight stitch and go back inside our first signature or the back cover. And we're going to go up and down again. So now we have one, two, three, four little straight stitches and this one is empty. And we're going to go all the way back up again. So yeah, someone just said when they get folded, they're three inches. Yeah, my book is four inches high by three inches across. So I'm inside the back cover at E, the last hole. And there's really only one way to go, which is right here to hole number D. I'm gonna come out onto the front. So I'm gonna make a second straight stitch right here. So we've got one straight stitch here, but we're gonna have two here. And then later we will um, loop down to make those into cute little link stitches. Come up through here. And now inside signature two at hole D, I'm gonna exit at hole C. Because really, where else are we going to go, right? We could go here. We could go here. We're not going to go back on ourselves. We're going to keep going forwards. So let's fill in that gap. We're in the center hole. Second signature coming out to the front. Remember, you can watch the replay and um, follow along with the written directions if you need to. And we're going to come back inside our back cover at that center creating a second straight stitch. So we've got one straight stitch here, two here, two here. I'm inside the back cover in the center at C, I'm exiting D. This all looks complicated, but I promise you it's a piece of cake. Once you start doing it, you'll be like, oh yeah, obviously. I'm on the outside at station B on the back cover. I'm going to create a second straight stitch right here into signature one, a whole B. And then where else have I got to go? Right here to this empty hole. I'm coming out onto the front cover at signature one. So let's just review where we're at. One straight stitch here at E, two straight stitches at D, C and B, and I'm right here at A at the beginning where we started. Here's that six inch tail, and here's this long, our long sewing thread. So we're going to tie a square knot here. So if you have another needle, um, grab the other needle. You could always just use the one you're using, but let's make our life easier and just grab another one. Let's see. How many ply does... Um, this one is a four ply that I'm using. But um, I like quite like three ply. But three or four ply is fine. So I've th threaded my six incher and I'm re-entering the first hole back inside our back cover. Okay, and then I'm gonna just um, do, I might just do one little knot inside to tie it off. So slide under that stitch to create a loop and bring that needle through and just tie a little knot and snip it off. So now we've got rid of that six inch tear because that can be a little troubling. So now we have attached our back cover to our first signature or last signature, whichever way you want to look at it. Let's bone fold it within an inch of its life and let's just keep going. So this now is will seem extremely familiar to you. We're going to be doing link stitches and kettle stitches. So the nice thing about this book is that there's no hard covers. It's just our... Um, 
prints are our covers. So I just, I love the way it feels in my hand. It feels so chunky and fun. All right, so here is signature number three. My dot is at the top. Can you see these are not all the same size? They're all just kind of mixed. If you're just joining us, we're using mixed papers, just whatever's left on our desk and creating, um, uh, what's the word? Just sort of scrap, little scrapbooks. Okay, so just to review, this thread has now exited the um, front cover. We're gonna bypass signature two, add on number three and enter number three at that first hole to create another straight stitch on the outside. Let's exit, hole B. This is where everything starts to look familiar. This is where we're gonna to start to do our link stitches because we have this double little, um, double uh, straight stitch right here, we can do a link stitch. Now I managed to slide that under, normally we're gonna have to open it up. You know I damaged that, so. I see colored pencil in my future to cover that up. So we're gonna slide it between signature one and two, or the back cover. And slide it under to create our link stitch. And then re-enter the signature at B. Let's do it again in the middle. Come out that middle hole, C, slide under. So that we, you can slide it under like this, but I prefer to go in here flip up my book with my needle, bring my needle around and my thread around and do it that way, just like that. Either is fine. Pull up to create a link stitch. Let's do one more and then we'll be doing a kettle. So the kettle comes at the end of the third one. Let's just call our back cover signature to make our lives easy. We're going to bring the needle up under here like that. I'm going to do it the long way. Whoops. Oh, I got it caught. It's not what we want, is it? We want it around this one right there. Link stitch between signature one and two or back cover in the next one and re-enter. So hopefully you are feeling on familiar ground right now. Okay. So now we're gonna do a kettle, just like we did before. Through here, we don't need to open the book now because we're just um, going out the side, aren't we? In this round, but we're not going to do a link, are we? We're going to do a kettle to make it stronger. So we're going to bring it up through that loop, pull upwards. Let's just squeeze the book slightly. There's our kettle. Good old bone fold. Let's add on the next signature and just repeat. So I'm going to try and sew and look at your questions, but that might actually be a recipe for disaster. It's just Forge these holes. So um, who here has joined the Handmade Book Club? That's what I want to know. I know many of you are already members, but are there any new members here? Or are there any folks here who have um, questions? Because it is a commitment, for sure, a financial commitment. And so if anyone's got any questions, if you're on the fence and you're thinking about joining, please um, pop them in the chat and either Mickey, myself, or another club member will answer. So I'm entering this. Do you know why I can't see these holes? I'm wearing my glasses and I'm standing up, so I don't actually have very good vision right now. I'm sure some of you can relate. Here we go. Where's my little hole? I don't want to make a new hole. I already made a new hole. There it, there it is. Okay, I did the next signature with a little straight stitch. That's like half my kettle. 
let's keep going. So yeah, if any of you do have um, club questions, feel free to ask us. Lots of things that, um, questions that come up is, you know, do you need to be on Facebook? You actually don't. We do most of our meetings on Zoom. Here's my next link stitch. Other questions that come up are, um, what day of the week do we have our things? We always try to do things on, try to do our mixed media class on a Friday. Meetings are generally on like Fridays. Our retreats are generally Saturday or Sunday and our community meetings are on Sundays. Make another link stitch. This is a bit of a hot mess. I'm sorry, folks. I can't actually see that well. <laughs> I know you forgive me. The link stitch. One, two. Bring it around. I absolutely love doing link stitches. The link stitch. We've come to the end. So we're going to do a kettle. The reason we do the kettle on the end is because um, on both ends is it's a more secure stitch. It's like doing a little knot. So let's bring the needle down one, two, through here, create a loop, come up through the loop. Switch hands so you can see and pull nice and tight. Not the most attractive stitch in the world, but hey ho. Add on a second to last signature. So you can watch again. And then um, there's no weirdness adding on the final cover because um, we just do exactly the same way. So I climbed up with a straight stitch, which is going to be a kettle later on. I'm going down two to create a link stitch. Oh, well, whoever said that, thank you. Your struggles are my, my struggles are your struggles. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Nothing's ever perfect. Nothing ever looks like it really does on Instagram. Look, so I've just gone through the wrong spot. Nothing ever looks like it does on Instagram. Trust me. I'll be fully transparent about my struggles, folks. So one, two. That's why there's that um, basket full of paper. I mean, I make mistakes all the time. Another kettle, I mean, another um, link stitch, sorry. There we go, another link in the middle. So if you wanna do more signatures, you certainly can. You don't have to do six, you could do, um, I would do minimum six, you could do eight, 10, 12, you could do 25 if you wanted. Another link stitch. Bringing my needle up, I use my needle to lift those signatures so I know where it's hiding. Come round, form the link. Okay. We'll do a kettle next and then we'll put on our cover. That didn't take long, right? <laughs> she says, looking at the time. Took longer to um, figure out what Facebook was doing, right? Okay, let's do one, two, another kettle on the end. There we go. So the printable directions are um, on the screen, where to go to get those. Um, but they're also in the description. So feel free to do those, um, to print those off. So this is my cover. So this really is my front cover because we want this piece facing outwards. Just laid it on the top. Let's just reforge these holes a little bit. Okay, we're going in hole E. Well, we would, right, if we could. Going in hole E. Come on, honey. There we are. Going in hole E, last hole. Coming out of hole D. We've just done a little straight stitch there. We're going to do another link. Going be down one, two gaps like this, and we're almost at the end. Okay. 
more questions are there? Let me see. Froze up. Oh no. Facebook is far easier to use than Zoom. <laughs> I'm just trying to read while sewing. Don't do that. Okay. This is my final link stitch in the center. Come around. So yeah, this is six, but imagine if you did like a really cute, chunky one that's like, I don't know, 10 signatures or something. Oh, it'd be so nice. There's something about chunky little books that I just find so appealing. Come on, come on, honey. Where are you? I'm gonna make that a hole. There we go. Thank you. All right, last link. Lift up, bring it around. Look at that cute little rolling stitches. Hopefully you can see that contrast, okay. So on the inside, this is what you're gonna see. Make sure you're on the right track. The subsequent signatures. So let's do our final kettle. So for this final kettle stitch, we're gonna do two, just to make sure it's secure. So thread the needle through and up the loop. Pull upwards and let's do a second one through here, up through my loop, and pull to tighten. And then I want you to bring this needle back through hole A of signature one, or the front cover, just to tie it off. So you could leave it on the outside if you wanted to and put some beads on it. Um, I'm just gonna tie it off inside here. So you can go in and um, adjust these blown out holes if you need to, or if any of them have ripped a little bit. Oh, look, that ripped. Hmm. I'll probably go in there with some glue stick and fix that, a little bit of PVA. But go in and um, adjust as necessary. It may need to press because it might be a little bit bouncy. Here's how to do your closure. So I don't know, so I think someone gifted this to me. I don't know where I got it from, but if you did gift it to me, thank you. I'm just gonna do maybe, I don't know, about a yard, maybe, maybe a bit more. I just want enough um, to wrap around several times. It's kind of a judgment call how much you want to, um, how much you want to do. Go, go with more rather than less. Go with something quite thin. This is a silky cord, or you could do a quarter inch ribbon, something like that. Um, and you want to, um, Take the two ends and sort of fold it in half almost. I'm just going to come upwards. There we go. Oops. Yeah. I want you to open it to the center of the book. So for me, that's right here between the signatures. I want you to feed one of the um, threads, one of the um, pieces of cord on one side of the link and one on the other and pull through. Like that. So you've got the little cord on the inside, and then these on the outside, and then you can do the you can re, you can do the same thing again, like just wrap them around. So open it up to the center again. Oops, there we go. Open it up to the center, and then wrap these cords around that middle stitch one more time, if you would like. So, I mean, you know, you're going to put strain on that link stitch, so um, you might want to be careful with that. You don't want to sort of really um, yank on this um, cord too much. Um, I don't even tie a knot here. I just leave this wrapped around the link stitch. <coughs> Excuse me. As I don't particularly want a knot on my... Um, spine but um feel free if you want to do a knot and then we've got lots and lots of cord here and i i 
um, I'll probably trim this up so that it's even. Let me show you on this one. Just get rid of that. Let me just show you on this one. I put a bead on the end, a couple of beads on the end, and a knot. Let's see, it's the same thing. Just wrapped, no knot. And just close your little book. So I press this overnight, but it's still a bit springy, but that's okay. Um, and I'll probably press this one too as well, because um, that's a bit more springy. Um, but that's just the kind of nature of the book. We've got all these scraps and everything. Um, but yes, that is your little link stitch book, my friends.